no student was abducted. Police denies abduction of students of Government Girls Secondary School in Zamfara. House should invite Mr. President to come and address the National Assembly. House of Representatives invites President Buhari on security matters. I think that by the end of the year, we should be at the seaport at our papa. That way, we have solved the problem of the gridlock once and for all. Federal government assures Nigerians of completion of Lagos Ibano Rail by end of May. And Supreme Court refutes claims of division within its administrative structure. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Also joining me tonight from our Lagos Network Center is Hingino John Adams. And from Joss, we have Caleb Guchin. Members of the Federal Executive Council are in a special meeting still ongoing at the presidential villa. The meeting, which started around 4 p.m. this Thursday, is being presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju. 23 memos are being attended to by the council in the meeting. In the meantime, Vice President Oshimbaju received judges of the African Court on Human and People's Rights, led by its president. We'll bring you details of this in our subsequent news. The second Nigerian earlier released by the Saudi Arabian authorities is now with the Nigerian consulate in Jeddah. Ibrahim, who was also arrested for alleged drug offenses similar to Zainab Aliyev's, got his freedom following the intervention of the federal government. In the meantime, the Buhari media organization BMO says President Muhammad Buhari should get all the accolades for the release of Zainab Aliyev by the Saudi Arabian authorities. A statement by BMO says the action of the president demonstrates that he considers the plight of Nigerians all over the world, irrespective of the place and status, as deserving of the welfare and protection of government, especially where their innocence is established. While commending the president for his prompt intervention, the group calls for the immediate prosecution of members of the cartel that planted and tagged the banned substance in Zainab Aliyev's name. BMO therefore calls on Nigerians to imbibe the spirit of nationalism and allow change to truly begin with them. In staying with security matters, the Inspector General of Police, Tactical Squad, SARS team and counter-terrorism units have been dispatched to rescue the abducted Magajan Garundawra al Musa Umar alive and well. Magajan Garundawra was abducted along Ingawa Kusada Road according to a statement by the spokesman for the Niger Police Katsina State Command, Gambu Isa. And still in the same vein, the Zamfara State Police Command says no student was kidnapped following yesterday's attack on government girls' secondary school, Boriki, by suspected armed bandits. The command police public relations officer, Shehu Mohammed, confirmed this to NTA News in Gusau. Jamilu Ibrahim has more. Some unidentified number of armed bandits forced their way into government girls' secondary school Moriki in Zurme local government area of Zamfara State this Wednesday at about half past 9 p.m. with the intent of kidnapping some students of the college. A combined team of security personnel in collaboration with members of the civilian JTF in the area, however, confronted the bandits and stopped them from gaining access to the students' hostels. No student was abducted, but however, uh, there are some two caterers, you understand, that are cooking food for the students. Uh, two of them was their three children who were later discovered uh, missing. The police spokesman who said security has been built up within the school and its environs explained that efforts have been made to rescue the abductees. The command uh, has also dispatched a search and rescue teams to the surrounding uh, bushes. Uh, with a view to uh, rescue, not only rescue the uh, uh, missing persons, but to also apprehend the culprits. This is said to be the first attack on school by armed bandits since the deterioration of security situation in Zamfara State. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, 
NTA News. More security news. Operation Puff Adder has come on stream in Edu State. The launch of the security outfit in the state to check crime also served as an opportunity for the police to parade some suspects, including a 37-year-old cultist alleged to have killed 38 persons. Bukola Wubusi reports. The contemporary security challenges in the country and proliferation of small arms informed the launch of Operation Puff Adder in Zamfara and Sokoto states with the acting Inspector General of Police last month. This is now being replicated in Edo State. Operation Puff Adder is a robust security action with massive deployment of trained personnel drawn from the police mobile force, SAS, Safer Highway, and the State Investigative Bureau. What's important about this Puff uh, Adder is issue of visibility policy, issue of joint raids, issue of motorized patrol, issue of synergy with members of public under the concept of community policy. So you can see the, the, the operation involves everybody because the issue of security is everybody's business. Let me use this opportunity to appeal to you all, especially our royal fathers, religious leaders, youth and commercial drivers, and all civil society groups for your cooperation and understanding to partner with the police your assistance will go a long way in reducing crime in the states. Away from the launch, nine suspects, including armed robbers and a 37-year-old courtist who confessed killing 38 persons, were also paraded. I said, boss, I'm in the car passenger. Now they the collect phone. I know if you can't have any phone, I don't collect. Don't play. I know if you can. What's the Some, some seven thousand, some, some seven thousand, some ten thousand. All this more, more. It is the expectation of the people that with the launch of Operation Puff Adder, crime and criminality will be brought to its barest minimum in the state. In Benin, Bukola Urubusi, NTA News. In the meantime, Nigeria has been given the opportunity to dialogue on security with one of its closest allies, Russia. The discourse took place at the 8th Annual Conference on International Security in Moscow with the Minister of Defense, Mansur Ang Ali, presenting a paper on regional security aspects. Noting common areas of interest between the two countries, mainly in human and material resources and security challenges, the minister credited the strategic partnership with promoting the achievement of critical national aspirations. From the Irish, we wish to liberate on Russian experience in counter-terrorism of Russia to bring so close to the air. The minister said bilateral relations between Nigeria and Russia have grown over the years and have witnessed cooperation in many fields. However, strengthening of the military and trade cooperation will further cement the relations between the two countries. With significant increase in the registration of government and military internet domains to more than 18%, the National Information Technology Development Agency is stepping up the process of automating all government domains as well as websites to ensure that all government businesses are conducted on secured domain to improve internet service delivery and enhance cybersecurity in the country. The Director General of the agency, Dr. Isa Ali Pantami, stated this at .gov.ng and .mil.ng sensitization forum and presentation of the reviewed policy aimed at advancing internet governance and supervision of the country's code top-level domain. The reviewed policy is a document that is expected to offer direction on the management and usage of government and military domain names, as well as how to resolve issues that may arise from the internet. Whoever sees .ng knows that you are from Nigeria. And it is our collective responsibility to make sure that we promote our country. It is more authentic because if you use generic top-level domain, anybody can use it. But country court level domain, it shows that this website is a genuine one. We also need to consider that the domains are actually hosted on servers. And we need to ensure that those domains are hosted in servers that are locally hosted within data centers in Nigeria. The implication of hosting our website outside 
are humongous. One of it is the security implication. The Nigerian Navy has continued to sustain its fight against all forms of criminality along the nation's waterways, with the recent arrest of contraband goods worth over tw more than 25 million naira. Commander Nigerian Navy ship Victory, Commodore Vincent Dukeke, said the effort is aimed at boosting the socio-economic sector while keeping the maritime domain safe. Mercy Nto has the report. Nigerian Navy ship Victory has been consistent in the fight against smuggling from other neighboring countries. The recent is the arrest of eight suspects with 724 bags of rice worth 13 million naira. Another is the arrest of 14 suspects with 375 bags of rice worth 7 million naira alongside a wooden boat carrying 105 drums of patrol, PMS, worth 6 million naira. Bunkers, smugglers, militants, they should all stay away. I assure all women in Nigerian seafarers that the water is safe for them. The custom authorities who received the contraband lauded the Nigerian Navy for the feat. I'm elated at this kind of development. It means that we can relatively say this particular aspect of the Nigerian waterway will be not safe for any smuggler. The suspects are to be prosecuted, out of which eight, including three Cameroonians, are to undergo further investigation. In Calabar, Messenger, NT News. President Muhammad Buhari has enjoined traditional rulers and to join hands with the leadership of the country in finding lasting solutions to the numerous security challenges confronting the country. He gave the advice at the South East Post-Election Peace Conference organized by the National Council of Traditional Rulers in Nigeria. We'll bring you more details as we get them. Time for us to take a short break now. There will be more news when we return. Stay with us. Dear mommy, you went out that night with the baby in your tummy, but you did not come back. The baby is very fine and she eats and sleeps a lot. Everyone says that you are in a better place, but I miss you so much. I keep asking them, where is the better place, but nobody answers me. Auntie Kemi just hugs me and says, go and play. Mommy, I miss you. Please, when are you coming home? I still will miss you, Mom. And in honor of your memory, I'm a doctor today working with the MTN Foundation to save mothers and children every day. Ending mother and child mortality in Nigeria is dear to us. We will keep strengthening this most important bond just for you.
The Lafia Traditional Council cordially invites all friends and well-wishers of the Asian Kingdom of Lafia to the official installation and presentation of staff of office to the 17th Emir of Lafia, Bare Mbari, His Royal Highness Honorable Justice C.D. Bage Won, JSC Retired Chairman, Nasarawa State Council of Chiefs. The occasion will be performed by His Excellency, the Governor of Nasarawa State, al Aji Tanko Al-Makura. Date, Friday, 3rd May, 2019. Venue, Lafia Emirate Council Secretariat. Emir's Palace, Lafia, Nasarawa State. Time, 10 a.m. Come and witness this historic event in the home of culture and tradition. Organizing committee, announcer. Activate your life, be who you want to be. an active life with the power of vegetables and fruits. Chivita Active. Be active. Do more. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lomana Multipurpose Hall, River Road, Jabi Road East, Gwarimi. Jerry Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Berkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the chief host is His Excellency Malam Nasr Ahmed Er Rufai, the executive governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris CFA MF Zezo. The host are Malam Yakubin Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malam Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Osta Okechuku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, announce our organizing committee. You are welcome. Thanks for staying with us on the news. The House of Representatives at Thursday's plenary resolved to invite President Muhammad Buhari to brief the National Assembly on the security situation in the country and what measures have been adopted to contain cases of banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery and other forms of criminality in parts of the country. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports that the House also passed the 2019 appropriation bill of 8.9 trillion naira. Motion of urgent public importance by Representative Ahmed Safana on banditry in parts of Casina State resulting to deaths of innocent persons and destruction of property elicited reactions from members. al village in Safana local government had been totally displaced. Guzira village in Safana local government also had several persons murdered in cold blood. And just yesterday, Gubra village came under attack. The House granted the prayers, urging federal government to declare state of emergency in Safana, Basari, and Dam Musa federal constituency of Kasina State. Deploy military personnel and supply relief materials through National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA as immediate measures to contain the activities of bandits in the area. A house should invite Mr. President to come and address the National Assembly on the security situation as it concerns the whole country. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. The eyes have it. Having adopted Appropriations Committee's report on the 2019 budget estimates at Tuesday plenary, the House passed the Appropriations Bill. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, At the Committee of the Whole, the House considered various committees' reports, but that to amend the provisions of the Electoral Act of 2010, of which President Buhari declined assent to, was stepped down to allow for proper documentation on the sections to be reviewed. Plenary was adjourned to Tuesday, 7th May 2019. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanin, NTA News. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, says building synergy among the various levels of government and policy making and tracking of the implementation of the budget and projects is key to service delivery. 
The SGF sit at this at the maiden retreat for heads and permanent secretaries of cabinet affairs offices drawn from the federal and state ministries. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports. Federal and state executive council meetings and other state affairs are serious business and for an error-proof memoranda to come by, well-trained co civil servants are charged with this responsibility. In preparation towards the inauguration of the new government come May 29, top members of the Cabinet Affairs Office are undergoing capacity building to reposition them for the task of enhancing efficient service delivery. Sound policy options bring about good public policies and effective service delivery where there is the political will to follow through to implementation. The forum also provided an avenue for experience sharing by some retired officers of the Cabinet Affairs Office and those in active service on the best global standard of generating memos to the end result when the citizens enjoy the dividends of democracy. The Cabinet Affairs Office is more than just a secretariat. It is a key instrument for the coordination of policies, programs, and projects of government, and also the tracking of their implementation. It will help us to understand how the federal and state governments can collaborate and coordinate their efforts in the performance of these roles. You should also regard your stay in this uh, Cabinet Affairs Office as a capacity building uh, aspect of your career. And you're going to learn things that you will not learn in any classroom situation. A manual on the modern trend in the running of Cabinet Affairs Office was also unveiled at the event. Ahmed Anders Ahmed, NT News. Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi says federal government will not slow down in its drive to complete ongoing projects across the country as it prepares for another term in office. The minister made this known while inaugurating the governing board of the Nigerian Railway Corporation in Abuja. Oyinaya Kaluaka reports. Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi, who just returned from China, where he went to inspect the 64 coaches being built for Nigeria, said 10 out of these coaches will be arriving the country in June this year in order to reduce the congestion at the Abuja Kaduna rail line. He said the lane of tracks for the 156 kilometer Lagos Ibadan rail will be completed by May and construction of stations to commence same months. We are hoping that by the end of the year we should be at the seaport at Apapa. That way we have solved the problem of the gridlock once and for all. Because you'll be able to move your goods to the hinterland through the, through the rail. So all those trucks that are parked there will have no reason to park at Apapa anymore. He called on the board members to be proactive in carrying out their duties. Don't slow us down with railways. It requires intensive action. Other achievements which are very glaring to us and which we look forward to, the proposed kaduna kano daurat Jibia line, east-west railway line is another development that will put additional laurel on the shoulders of the Honorable Minister. The 22 board members are saddled with the responsibility of setting out the Nigerian Railway Corporation's economic, operational and administrative policies in accordance with government drive. Ohinea Kaloka, NTA News. The process towards completion of the design of Ugun State Economic Transformation Project has reached appreciable level as the state government finalizes negotiations with the World Bank. This was revealed when the state government met with the World Bank team in Abeokuta. Likon Agbonde reports that the governor of Ugun State, Ibikunle Amusun, was also honored with Sustainable Development Goals Leadership Awards by two organizations for his contributions to the actualization of some key aspects of the United Nations SDGs. The negotiation between Ogun State Government and the World Bank to actualize the economic transformation project of the state has been on for two years. The $350 million project covers three critical areas comprising business environment, agriculture, and skill and manpower development. We anticipate that within the next two weeks, we should receive the management letter confirming uh, the funding of this mission. Ensuring that 
the investors that come to Ogun State are able to really thrive and employ people. The state government reiterates commitment to create an enabling environment to support private and public sector investment for social economic development of the state. Meanwhile, the governor, Ibikula Mosun, earned a leadership award for his contributions to Go 13, 16, and 17 of the United Nations SDG that center on issues of climate change, peace and justice, as well as partnership with private and public sectors to enhance human development. The preservation of our forest through the partnership of government and private sector is a right step toward achieving this. And this will go a long way to enhance the ecosystem and the green economy in the state. We must do all within our capacity to ensure that we do our bit. He noted that government would continue to make efforts to orientate the younger generations, especially through an initiative powered by the office of the wife of the governor, Gefti. In Abekuta, Lekon Agbonde, NTN News. The reconstruction and rehabilitation of the Umahia Ikorek Pedel Road will soon begin as the federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, rounds off its technical inspection of the design of the road. The road, which serves as a major link between the southeast and south-south zones, has degenerated over the years. Chinyari Rukoli has the details. The member representing Omoya and Ikuano Federal constituency, Representative Sam Onwebo, described the exercise as a major breakthrough in his untiring effort at the National Assembly to get the federal government to reconstruct the road. The federal lawmaker who described the Omoya Ekotebele Road as strategic to the economy of his constituency and the entire southeast and south south zones thanked the Minister of Power, Works and Housing for granting his request while appealing for immediate palliative work at the felt portion of the road within Oboro, Awomuku and Ariam Aziz. We are entering a new phase. So I must use this opportunity to commend the Minister of Power, Works and House and Babatunde Raji Fashwala for his interest in transforming you know, transportation in the country. And uh, as a people, since I represent the good people of Great Ikua no Mwaya, we are grateful to the federal government and we are looking forward to the successful completion of this project. The first phase of the dualization, according to the engineers, will begin from the express tower through Akanibia Road and terminate at Awomoboro in Ikuana local government area of Abia State. In Omoya Chinyere Okoli, NTA News. A handwritten Quran called Katul Baranawi has been presented in Abuja by clerics from different parts of the world. Drafted in the Warsh style, the idea which came in, 20, in, came in in 2014 was written in Borno by indigenous scholars and printed in Egypt after undergoing rigorous scrutiny by various notable Islamic clerics and scholars. Governor Ibrahim Gaidam of Yobi State believes the new translation is a source of inspiration, guidance and wisdom and should be well studied, understood and respected all over the world. As a result of this noble initiative, 100,000 copies of the standard Holy Quran have now been produced by the USA government for distribution to masjids, madras, and sangaya schools, ulamas, and individuals. I and members of my team consider this work as a significant milestone towards furtherance of the cause of Islam and therefore permanently free. And the development and progress of any nation depends on peaceful coexistence of its citizens irrespective of denomination or religious beliefs. This informed the gathering of some Christians and Muslims to commit the president and his deputy into God's hands for another four years of fruitful governance. Ngozi Sylvia Technicu reports. This performance and rendition set the stage for men and women of different religious backgrounds who came to thank God 
for the successful conduct of the 2019 general elections. They also prayed for the peaceful inauguration of President Muhammad Buhari and his vice, Professor Yemi Osimbajo, in May 29. They expressed optimism that the next level will be fruitful with Nigerians reaping the dividends of democracy. The prayer rally put together by One Million Man Interfaith Prayer Commission of Nigeria is expected to foster religious tolerance and as well promote peaceful coexistence for national development. We begin to imbibe the doctrine of tolerance, religious tolerance from childhood so that when they grow up they will not see a Christian, a Muslim will not see a Christian as an enemy, a Christian will not see a Muslim as an enemy. Guests at the event applauded the initiative, describing it as timely. They appreciate the contributions of the president and the vice president, who are God-fearing people. Praying for Almighty God to give our leaders the wisdom to pilot the affairs of this great country. Prayers were offered for the different arms of government and the generality of Nigerians. In Abuja, Ngozi Silva, Technical, NTA News. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has refuted claims of a division within the internal administrative structure of the nation's apex court. In a statement issued by Director Press and Information of the Supreme Court, Dr. Festa Sakondi, the court said it was misleading and ill-informed for stories to be circulated that recent happenings in the country had resulted in the factionalization of the Supreme Court. The statement said the Supreme Court is an organized and well-structured arm of government governed by rules and regulations, adding that it is most mischievous to claim that there was any form of external interference in the running of the court. The National Human Rights Commission, in collaboration with the African Court on Human and People's Rights, is holding an interactive session with NGOs to discuss the modalities of assessing the court and making its decisions binding. Naja Atutijani reports. Since Nigeria is yet to formally adopt the Declaration of Human Rights, already ratified by nine other African countries, the National Human Rights Commission, with support from the African Court on Human and People's Rights, is leading non-governmental organizations in the cause to make this a reality. Justice Sylvain Auré is the president of the African Court, a quasi-judicial body charged with monitoring the implementation of the Charter across Africa. Citing achievements in Tanzania, he says Africa stands to gain judicial independence from partisanship amongst other human rights benefits. So it's uh, very important to have uh, its, uh, one's right uh, protected by this kind of uh, international organizations. And uh, of course, uh, after having exercised uh, local remedies at the national level, because that means more people will be able to access the court if Nigeria makes this declaration. So on our own part, we are encouraging the government, we'll keep doing that. On a scale of 1 to 30, Africans have grappled with various forms of violence depicted on this banner, which constitute human rights violations. But the National Human Rights Commission, in partnership with the African Court of Justice, is pushing to ensure that Africans get justice at all times. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. And it's time now to link up with uh, Hingino in our Lagos Network Centre for more reports. Hingino. Thank you, Cyril, and welcome to Lagos. Minister of Science and Technology Ogbonaya Onu says developing indigenous capabilities for industrial purposes remains a priority of the federal government. He stated this in Lagos while inaugurating facilities at the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Oshudi. Ruth Ario Samuel has details. Availability of facilities for research and academic purposes help institutions to recruit and retain top researchers as there is global competition for top researchers. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Obunaya Onu, while commissioning capital projects at Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Oshodi, is of the opinion that the facilities will help researchers network with counterparts across the globe. Many of the research 
uh, that they used to do and then go to other countries uh, for analysis. We no longer, uh, you know, that will no longer take place. Uh, the research will be done here, the analysis will be done here, and this opens uh, new opportunities, you know, both for FIRO and for the nation. Director General FIRO, Professor Gloria Elemo, while conducting the minister around the facilities, intimated that knowledge is the new driving force of world economy. We are actually keyed and ready to turn the face of Nigeria in the area of industrialization and most importantly, job creation for the teeming unemployed youth that we have in this country. Facilities commissioned include newly constructed library complex, animal house, toxicology laboratory and electroplating building. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. The search for greener pastures abroad oftentimes lead to tales of torture, suffering and huge disappointment. And getting the victims to start all over can be very challenging. This prompted the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons to inaugurate a reintegration center in Lagos. Michael Olale reports. Since the federal government introduced the Voluntary Intervention Program to return stranded migrants trapped in Libya in 2017, over 12,000 Nigerians have been rescued. This migrant reintegration center would therefore provide shelter and skill acquisition to vulnerable female returning migrants. Sandra Ogome is one of the 50 women and girls at this center. I can be able to sew very well and also I can make soap. The center, which has so far reintegrated over 500 persons, provides temporary accommodation for a period of 90 days. Some of them at the end of the 90 days want to learn more, so we let them stay. It all depends on the availability of space and also on the commitment of the individual. This migrant reintegration center is one of the over 15 projects on the reorientation and rehabilitation of migrants currently being supported by the Swiss Federal Commission on Migration in Nigeria. We think this could be a good example for how migration uh, is dealt with uh, in, in future internationally. Aside providing this facility, the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons is supporting this entrepreneurial initiative with startup capital and tools for graduates in Lagos. Michael Olaleya, NT News. This is NT Network News. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. Data. We can't live without it. with it. Borrow it. Sell with it. Knowing that with glow, data is oxygen. When we first met, the first question I asked was, Where have you been all my life? Since then, we have taken every step together. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed having a pillar of support. Oh, actually. <laughs> Especially when the kids were schooling abroad. Oh, how we made it through those years. We've grown together. And we really wouldn't have come this far alone. <laughs> the chemistry is amazing when we share the same passion, the same drive. Yes. And the same vision to succeed. Everything is so smooth. No drama, no stress, no story. In fact, we're practically family. Let's help you achieve your visions and aspirations, milestone by milestone. FCMB. 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 My bank 
and I. Can your milk do this? Can your milk do this? Mine can. With Hollandia evaporated milk, your ice cream, custards, and variations of beverages taste pleasantly different. Hollandia evaporated milk. Life tastes different. From the house of Chi. Darling, what's the matter? It's your birthday. Guests are already waiting at the pool. It's headache, cold, pain all over my body. Home time anti cold tablets, powerful ingredients specially prepared to bring you fast relief from headache, body ache, cough, flu, cold, and fever. Baby, how are you feeling now? Wow, I feel great thanks to cold time tablet. Cold time tablet also available with syrup for children. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Cold time anti cold tablet, a quality product from Embassy Pharmaceutical and Chemicals Limited. Cold time anti cold tablet, your visa to healthy living. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous, whether you do it for fun or for political gains. Real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Back in Abuja now and focus on the Africa continental free trade area and ways of ensuring success as we join Chimobi Walter Naji on business news. Chimobi, suppose yeah. the difference here is uh, we're dealing with the continental, uh, the continental level of larger area than the normal free trade zones which we have in the country. Of course, the African countries are just trying to play out what we have in other continents uh, back here in Africa. Well, just how that will succeed is what you'll have to tell us. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, liberalization in Africa has been identified as a sure means to regional integration and growth of revenue generation in most African states. This, according to economists, is one way to facilitate trade between the over 1.2 billion people in Africa and yield a total GDP of $2.5 trillion. Now, as one of the ways to ensure success of the African continental free trade area, experts say there is need to reduce both tariff and non-tariff barriers as a potential to substantially increase trade within the region. What we find is that if tariffs on 90% of intra-regionally traded goods are reduced to zero, as is planned under the AFCFTA, intra-regional trade will go up by as much as 16%. Uh, there will be also big gains if uh, uh, other non-tariff barriers are tackled, such as improving trade logistics and infrastructure. And in other stories, the United Nations World Food Programme, WFP, has announced its readiness to expand support to humanitarian and development programs, especially in northeastern Nigeria. This is based on a new country's strategic plan which is expected to last for the next four years. The WFP country director in Nigeria, Meta Khalad, noted that the effort is in the United Nations bid to engage relevant stakeholders in a strategic blueprint to solve the problems of dependence on food assistance in some parts of the country. And now to the equities market, where trading ended bullish, inching up slightly by 0.04% to close with 29,171.73 basis points. A total of 4,836 deals exchanged hands with a trade volume of 279 million valued at 2.82 billion naira. Market capitalization stood at 10.9 trillion naira. Meanwhile, Transcop led the top traded equities with 34 million trade volume valued at 42. 5 million naira ahead of Dangote Floor and Chams. And those 
are the trading figures rounding up our business contribution at this time. The news continues with Cyril. All right, so we look forward to the success of the trade zone. Obviously, Africa. obviously right. it will succeed. Right. Thank okay. you. Good. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has reassured contractors of a level playing ground. Group Managing Director, Mekan Tibaru, at the 2019-2020 direct sale of crude oil and direct purchase of petroleum products, says the NNPC, having imbibed the anti-corruption stance of President Buhari, will not compromise. Energy correspondent Lydia Samson reports. Introduced in 2016, the direct sale purchase agreement adopted by the NNPC, which replaced the oil processing agreement, is still being applauded as a value addition agreement. This has also contributed to uninterrupted field supply in the country. The third public bid opening for key players is yet another landmark event to maximize the value of the Nigerian crude oil for the benefit of Nigerians and other stakeholders. It also improves transparency. It allows new players. Uh, the dynamics is there and it also allows new entrants with capacity to come in. And if you're looking for too long, then you lose opportunities or possible price uh, reductions. You also lose opportunities of people with very good ideas on how to improve your processes. For the group general manager could oil marketing division, mainly carry. The process is all about engaging reputably qualified companies. He emphasized that the era of name dropping and favoritism is over. Group General Manager Supply Chain, Baba Isa Miringa, gave an overview of the bidding process as the GMD surrounded by other stakeholders randomly picked an open selected bid with company representatives who confirmed the authenticity of their bid opened in the presence of all. 132 companies bidded the 2019-2020 direct sale of crude oil and direct purchase of petroleum products. In Abuja, Lydia, Samson, and President Mohamed Buhari has enjoined traditional rulers to join hands with the leadership of the country in finding lasting solutions to the numerous security challenges confronting the country. The details of this now come to you as Jude Obiora reports that the conference held at the Secretariat of the Imo State Traditional Council. President Buhari, represented by Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said traditional rulers occupy important position of promoting good governance in their various domains. He maintained that the federal government recognizes their roles in peace management. Boss Mustafa explained that the federal government is committed to ensuring the safety and peaceful coexistence of Nigerians and called on the traditional rulers to continue to contribute their quota in curbing the security challenges in the country. I also wish to bring you the warm greetings from His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who has continued to recognize the importance of traditional rulers in the successful management of the affairs of the nation. He has also affirmed this administration shall continue to accommodate all Nigerians irrespective of their leanings. <laughs> Chairman, National Council of Traditional Rulers and Sultan of Sokoto, Alahaji Sadid Abubakar, said the summit was to further strengthen the peace and unity of the nation and charge traditional rulers to remain good ambassadors of the traditional institution. And here to further strengthen the unity between us as one great people of this great country. We have been working towards peaceful coexistence of our nation. We shouldn't just talk the talk. We should walk that talk. And talk about peace. And talk about peace. The event featured the inauguration of the Secretariat of the Imo State Traditional Rulers Council in Owari, Judobiara, NTN News. And the news continues with more reports from our Joss Centre as we link up with Caleb. Thank you, Cyril. Welcome to Joss. 
The Executive Secretary, Public Complaints Commission, Bala Mohammed, has called for the establishment of an independent management agency to manage recovered looted assets and proceeds of crime in Nigeria. The Secretary was speaking at a public lecture in Jokes. Rinred Sylvanus Lord reports. The annual lecture brought together intellectual minds from the academia, guests and students of the Department of Political Science, discussing the topic fiscal federalism and the question of return of looted assets and proceeds of crime. The guest lecturer linked the concept of financial inequality, corruption and order six of 2018. He said though the president has signed the order which helps to recover assets of corrupt government officials, merely tracing and freezing of funds has not helped third world countries. He should have the ability to take over all funds, all proceeds of crimes that have been confiscated and then the taking over. He should manage it so that if the victim of these funds is declared innocent, he can have value for it. He can have his uh, property uh, in a good uh, situation. We need to, as students of political science, create and find a link and see most likely why corruption keeps growing. Representatives of the Vice Chancellor, University of Jos, and that of Professor Eliagu all pointed to the fact that the professor deserved to be honored. For us at home, our father is strict on moving. Principles for recognizing the necessity of pragmatic dimensions of discretion. Other discussants and students traced the Department of Political Science in University of Jos to Professor Eliagu in 1979. In Jos, been read Silvanus Lot at NTA News. Ahead of the 2019 Ramadan fast, Nigerians and Muslims in particular have been urged to ensure transparency and probity in all their dealings. This is the focus of deliberations at the end of the 26th annual seminar of Jibwis in Jos. Abdul Hawahab Baban Kanti completes the report. I'm afraid we seem to have lost our audio from our Just Network Center. So we're back here in Abuja. We'll take a short break to bring you some messages. Stay with us. Okay, open your phone tank. Hold on, please. Let me calm down. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hope you've rubbed off your beater. Oh, Oga, we no longer tamper with our cold Spain's beater because it is cheating and corruption. I will always sell for to all customers at the correct amount because change begins with me. Nice one. How much, Oga? Fill up. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now. You can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Sports Now with Kene Imago Dike. Nigeria's senior national men and women's handball team.